Good morning, lovelies. Today, we're going to talk about toxic femininity, what it is, how it appears in our media, and what we can do about it. I should probably make a very quick disclaimer here. Toxic femininity is not feminism. Feminism is not toxic femininity, and not all femininity is toxic. Clear on that? Excellent. Okay, cool. Moving on. Before we get started, remember to subscribe to the channel for more videos on science fiction, fantasy, and horror through a feminist lens. If you'd like to directly support the channel, join the community on Patreon. That link is in the description. Okay, so first things first. What is toxic femininity? If toxic masculinity, which I know we have all heard of, is an unhealthy obsession with masculinity, then it stands to reason that toxic femininity is the same thing from the other angle, an unhealthy obsession with femininity. The truth is, I actually had a really hard time researching this topic because I got a bunch of different definitions when I searched the term and they all contradict each other. The reason for this is that toxic femininity hasn't been given as much study, time, and attention as toxic masculinity. And I think the reason for this is because we live in a patriarchal society where men as a whole have a lot more power than women, which means that widespread toxic behavior among men is going to cause a lot more noticeable damage than widespread toxic behavior among women. But that doesn't mean that we should just ignore toxic femininity. <sighs> okay, you know what, J just a quick heads up. I am going to start using TF for that phrase and TM for toxic masculinity. Otherwise, I'm just gonna end up saying these three words over and over and over again until they just lose all meaning and my tongue gets twisted into a gorgon knot. So just heads up on that, okay? We should not ignore TF because it is dangerous, it seeps into our fictional media, and that does affect how we view the world and behave in real life. Research the psychology of fiction and how it affects us in the real world. It's a trip. When I went online to research toxic femininity and do the script for this video, I found several articles claiming that it just doesn't exist, that it is a straw man argument used by men's rights activists as a false equivalency for toxic masculinity. And I admit, I have only ever heard the term come up whenever I try to talk about toxic masculinity. Hey guys, maybe we shouldn't be teaching our boys to bottle up their emotions or risk their health in stupid stunts to prove their manliness and only see girls as sexual conquests. What do you say? Well, toxic femininity exists too, you know. Why don't you do a video about that, huh? Stuff. Just a quick note on social etiquette here. When someone is talking about an issue that largely affects or is perpetuated by one group of people, like toxic masculinity, keep the conversation on that. Then, if you truly care about the other issue, like toxic femininity, you can start a conversation on that in its own separate space. That way, both issues get the attention that they deserve, and you don't come across as a child who is only trying to deflect away from a subject that you would rather to continue to ignore rather than address it like an adult. In case it wasn't already obvious here, I do believe that TF exists, albeit on a smaller scale than TM. Both of them do deserve their own conversation. We had one on toxic masculinity, and now it's toxic femininity's turn. Those who do use TF as a straw man argument often equate it with feminism. You know, that, that belief that all genders are created equal and should be treated equally and with respect. Obviously that philosophy has grown and branched down to a hundred different sub-philosophies on its own, but that is the basic principle. Some strands of feminism are toxic, especially TERFs and rad femmes, but most of it is not, and those who equate toxic femininity with all of feminism, especially intersectional feminism, don't know what they're talking about. Finally, finally, I managed to find two actual, plausible definitions of toxic femininity that I am willing to work with. I call them the passive definition and the aggressive definition. There is some overlap between the two, and you could argue that they're both two sub-variants of the same thing manifesting in different situations. So the first one we're going to talk about is the passive definition. This comes from Psychology Today, which defines TF as, quote, the silent acceptance of violence and domination from men in order to survive. 
Basically, it's the widespread acceptance among women of a patriarchy and toxic masculinity, coupled with exaggerated feminine traits of passivity, sensuality, empathy, etc. Basically, it's a survival method slash coping mechanism for toxic masculinity. So some examples of this in real life would be prioritizing physical appearance in women over anything else, even to the point of endangering her health. So this would be something like eating disorders or frequent use of high heels and encouraging this behavior among other women. On the writer's front, this would be prioritizing how femme characters look over her contribution to the story or having all of your heroes be super thin and pretty and all of your villains or comic relief being fat. She's a genius scientist who's the first human to discover alien species, but is she hot? This would also be prioritizing other people's needs, especially men's, even at the detriment to herself. I will not go into great detail here, but a thing that I've noticed in this particular area is women who endure very uncomfortable or even painful sexual situations that they don't want but their boyfriend or husband do. Other instances would be the wife taking over all of the housework even though both she and her husband have full-time jobs. She's putting her emotional and physical health at risk by pulling what's basically two full-timers. And of course, punishing other women who don't do these things. Choosing to work against women rather than with them just because they're women is a trait shared by both toxic subgroups. Now in sci-fi and fantasy media, this would be classic Disney princesses who don't even participate in their own story, or damsels in distress who do nothing to fight back or even try to survive. This would be every dumb blonde trope, especially when it's a blonde versus brunette situation that pits two women against each other because hair color. This would also be stories that objectify women, reducing them to nothing more than love interest, a prize to be won, and that's what girls really should aspire to be. Never mind her intriguing backstory or ambitions, the best thing she can do for herself and everyone around her is to end up with a man. Or die. The thing about this version of TF is that we've already started to curb it, especially in our media. Disney is no longer writing princesses like this. Even though we still see very passive and passive-aggressive women characters in media, modern writers are being pressured by their audiences to avoid them, to give women agency and not objectify them, to give them goals outside of landing a man. Sometimes this works. And sometimes we get to see definition B, or the aggressive version of femininity. So aggressive toxic femininity would be something like Mean Girls, but not satirical. This would be tearing someone down with malicious gossip, using sex, either as a bribe or something to be withheld, as a weapon, sexually harassing or even assaulting the men around her, because she's less likely to be caught, and because men always want sex. If he says no, he's either gay or lying, right? Demanding to be in a relationship with certain men, even if they don't want it, bullying other women into hating their bodies to the point of fatal eating disorders. Never mind that she just had a baby, she needs to lose 10 pounds stat. And it's much more common among women who have some position of authority, because it's allowed. Now in media, I've only ever seen this version of toxic femininity occur in villains. It's the mean girl trope, or the villainous femme fatale. That in and of itself is not an issue, especially since we are equating toxicity with villainy, which I like. However, in these stories, 9 out of 10 times, the good girl or the protagonist will be very much not feminine. She'll be a tomboy, or a book nerd, or an otherwise totally reject femininity as a whole, which equates femininity as a whole with toxicity. That is problematic because, much like masculinity, femininity as a whole is not bad. Now for another example of toxicity, some of you have noticed the Throne of Glass series behind me and asked if this series is toxic. Yeah, it is. The first time I read it, I didn't really notice. I thought it was great. And then with hindsight, reflection, rereading it, I've realized that a lot of it and the behavior of these protagonists is very toxic, but it's not toxic femininity. 
the character's toxicity doesn't come from their obsession with being feminine. In fact, the vast majority of these characters are masculine, so I would argue that it's either an example of how toxic masculinity affects masculine women, and or it's just plain unhealthy behavior with little to no gender bias. Video for another time. Now, whenever I release one of these videos, I get comments from certain writers about how they want to portray toxicity in the writing because it reflects reality, and they don't want to dilute that. Which, hey, I get it, that's fair, I'm a writer too. Some people want their art to reflect reality, and I get it. But you gotta be careful when you do something like this, because it is very easy to pass off toxicity as something that is normal, even healthy, and that is a message that your audience will absorb, especially if you're writing something like young adult novels. So let's talk about some stories that, in my opinion, write toxic femininity correctly. I know I've mentioned it already a couple of times, but Mean Girls is a really great example of this. It writes toxic femininity as the unhealthy, corruptive force that it is, without demonizing all of femininity. Even though Regina and Katie both turn to more masculine pursuits, lacrosse and math respectively, to help curb their toxicity and humanize themselves, they still remain largely feminine. And the other two members of the group stay completely feminine. They just have to stop being toxic. Another much more subtle example would be Piper and the Aphrodite Cabin in Rick Riordan's Percy Jackson series. Now in the first five books, we're given a very dim view of the children of Aphrodite. They are very useless in battle and monster fighting, in a series of books that is all about battles and monster fighting. Selena is the only character with any depth from that cabin, and that doesn't really happen until book five when she dies. And then in book six, we meet Piper, and she is pissed that she is a daughter of Aphrodite. She wants nothing to do with it, she hates all things feminine and girly, and it doesn't help that the current head counselor of that cabin is extremely toxic, a Regina George. But as the book progresses, she comes to have a deeper understanding of what her mother stands for. It's about love in all of its forms, romantic, platonic, and family. It's about finding the beauty in everything and everyone, not just the superficial stuff like makeup, but helping people feel beautiful. She never turns into a girly girl, but she stops demonizing all things feminine and has a greater appreciation for it, without bowing to the more toxic corners. She also starts this really great friendship with tomboy bookworm Annabeth Chase, and the two often use their complementing skills to work together to solve problems and not die. And this creates in Annabeth an appreciation for Aphrodite and her children that didn't really exist in the first five books. Authentic girl friendships are almost impossible under TF, so seeing one is a good sign that there's little to no toxicity going on. Toxic femininity is easier to fight because we already demonize femininity in and of itself, even the healthy parts, and that's, I think that's the biggest problem. We as a society value masculinity and masculine traits, which is why it's a lot harder to fight TM. We have to convince a lot of people that some of the things that they value or the way they go about that is harmful, as is the way that is reflected in media. The challenge with TF is, I think, realizing that femininity as a whole is fine. It's not good, it's not bad, it just is. Just don't be a bitch about it. And don't pass off your shallow, passive, sexy characters who do nothing more than smooch the hero as something that all women should aspire to be. That's all I've got. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you can, support this channel on Patreon. Link in the description. Bye, lovelies.